just baked a brand new batch of cookies, and I wanted to get your opinion. Of course. <laughs> Davey, our neighbor Liz brought over some cookies. Would you like to try one? These really are delicious, Liz. You should consider selling them. Well, I'm trying to start a business at home, and I need some help with how to get started. You know, I have a friend at the Department of Health Services, and she tells me there's a new program for home cooks just like you. Kate said the program began with House Bill 2103 that passed this year. The law allows residents to produce non-potentially hazardous baked and confectionery products in their homes and sell them commercially in Arizona. Non-potentially hazardous? What does that mean exactly? They mean baked goods like brownies, cookies, fruit pies, and toffee. They don't allow custards, cheesecakes, or fillings like pumpkin, cream pies, meringue, or ingredients of animal origin. Those could be mishandled and potentially hazardous. Well, that makes sense. But this could be good for anyone who wants to bake in their own home and make some extra money. You know, when Kate told me about this program, it made me think about our family and other families I know that have children and young adults with special health care needs and disabilities. It's a great opportunity to be able to work part-time at home together. We can set our own schedules so that uh, Davey can help out after school. The program provides employment options for those who might not otherwise be able to work. It allows anyone to work in a familiar environment, develop skills and explore interests, work a flexible schedule that meets their needs, use adaptive equipment they already have at home, become an integral part of their community, earn a living as much as possible, and become more self-directed. That's a wonderful program. It even helps me, just looking to make a little extra money. You know, Liz, there's also nutritional information online that can help you add value to your creations by using healthy ingredients and reducing calories. Well, what kind of healthier options are you talking about here? Some people make foods that are for special diets, gluten-free, salt, and sugar-free. You can reduce calories and go healthy just by making some simple substitutions, like using canola oil instead of vegetable oil, replacing baking chocolate with cocoa and soy oil, substituting powdered milk for some of your sugar, reducing salt, substituting two egg whites for one whole egg, using applesauce or pureed prunes instead of oil, shift to whole wheat flour instead of white flour, and skim milk instead of whole milk. Light butter or margarine can replace butter, and you can add nutrient-dense fruit or veggie purees to make breads healthier and moderate the size of your servings. You know, I can focus on a particular diet, like people who use sugar-free foods. I think I found my niche. <laughs> Kate also told me about the requirements for this to be legal and safe. Anyone preparing the food must get a food handler's card if their county requires it. They must also register with the Home Baked and Confectionery Goods Program. Also, the basic safety rules apply. Keep non-employees and animals out of the prep area during processing. Make sure you clean and sanitize preparation areas before and after use. Food and contact surfaces should be easy to clean, smooth and free of breaks, open seams, cracks, chips, pits and similar imperfections and free of difficult to clean corners and crevices. Wiping cloths should be stored in a sanitizing solution such as 100 parts per million chlorine bleach. You know, one teaspoon bleach and a half gallon of water. This washing, rinsing, and sanitizing are essential to controlling contamination that can cause foodborne disease. Make sure any sinks are supplied with hot and cold water under pressure. All waste should be put in durable, easily cleanable, insect and rodent resistant containers that don't leak or absorb liquids. Make sure you separate all items associated with the food processing operation from any residential items. Proper hand washing is an important way to control the spread of foodborne disease. Use warm water and soap to scrub hands and forearms for 20 seconds before rinsing. Wash your hands before handling food, after handling raw products, after using the restroom, smoking or eating, after taking out the garbage, and after touching your hair or skin. Keep your hands clean. Use gloves that have been approved for use with food to handle ready-to-eat foods. Wash your hands before putting on clean gloves. 
change gloves when they become soiled, torn, after taking a break or starting a new task. Make sure you verify zoning restrictions with local city or county officials and your insurance company to determine the impacts of a home-based business on homeowner's liability. It's a lot of information, but it's important when you're cooking food for sale. You're right. It's the common sense rules that keep our food safe. So, when I'm done baking, how do I package and label my products? Well, you should make sure all your food is securely packaged. On each package, you need to give the name of your business, address where it was prepared, your name and phone number, and finally, a complete list of ingredients. A lot of information is available at the ADHS website, from information on your food handler's card to safety and other guidelines. <laughs> Davy and I love your new cookies. So, when can we buy them? Now that I have all the information I need to get my business started, it shouldn't be long. Cheers! <laughs> Cheers! <laughs>